Um, this is a journalist named Elizabeth Brunig. This is an older video. Uh, she works for the New York Times. She was interviewed by Jan Helfeld. Now, those of you that have been on the internet for a while would be familiar with Jan Helfeld. Uh, he is a libertarian type, has been for years. He's interviewed some big, big figures over the years, presidents and senators, Congress people. Um, he's debated almost every prominent uh, libertarian thinker that I'm aware of uh, in terrible fashion. Anyway, he, he's he, he prides himself on his Socratic dialogue. Um, his implementation of it, I would say, is flawed, but that's just my <clears throat> subjective opinion. Anyway, so on this day, um, <laughs> you're snickering. I guess you're familiar with Jan Hilfeld then. <laughs> I I saw this horrible man who debated with him that just the guy comes out dressed horribly in this gaudy, god awful shirt and clearly way less scholastically educated and just mops the floor with poor Jan. It was just oh, really it was almost I almost felt sorry for Jan. The guy uh Larkin Rose. Um yeah, yeah I actually did a, a short audio bit about Larkin Rose being a bad man for doing that. It was just it was awful the way he treated <laughs> that poor guy. It was hilarious. I need to, I need to go back and look at that. That's probably brilliant. Um Okay, so I want to, this is a, this is a clip where this um, clearly intelligent journalist for the New York Times, who's clearly studied her philosophy, um, has a, a terminally bad take on the non-aggression principle and specifically on property and how it is incepted and how it functions. And I thought that would just be a good thing to talk about. So um, it's not the very beginning of this, but let's just Violate kind of... Anybody's rights. For instance, if people are hurting themselves and you need to restrain Why is it so quiet? Them, um, that can be a case where it's uh, all right. I have to work on the course. volume here. Um, One second. You can get pretty deep into just war theory um, and then <coughs> very complex geopolitical situations where it begins to make sense in the defense of third parties or anticipated harms to initiate. Uh, initiate violence, and I, I'm open to all of those things existing. The okay. problem with the non-aggression principle we go. is that um, you actually need aggression to create property, right? So it's kind of an incoherent premise, right? Because if I aggression is what creates property. Yeah. So if I really? say this is mine, what makes it mine is my right to exclude you from it, right? And so that's an aggression. Yeah, if, so, if so you produce something and no, 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 I didn't produce it. I could just say it's mine. Oh, I didn't produce this. This table, this table isn't yours. It's mine. I'm saying it's mine. As long as someone else, you come on I'm saying and it's say mine. that it's yours. And if anyone comes up to it and tries to sit down at it or use it and I beat them up, I'm the one initiating force, right? I mean, I'm the one excluding them from the property that is now mine. That's what makes it my property, in fact, is this exclusionary force. Otherwise, it was just a piece of the world, right? I mean, it was here. People could use it. Now I'm saying it's mine, and I'm excluding them from this it. This guy here by accident. Who knows? Uh, grows on trees. Tables grow on trees. Suppose we go <laughs> out in the world where there's no primitive accumulation, and, and I take some plot of land from nature and say it's mine, and no one can come on it. People just want to walk across it. I beat them up or attack them, saying it's my property. I'm the one initiating force there. So that's what creates property. Oh, the land uh, was he. And then Jan goes on to make the discussion useless so we'll stop there uh, <laughs> um okay so aggression creates property is kind of the summary of what she had to say um do you have any initial thoughts gosh she's sure bright or and i don't know the term there's a logical fallacy for the use of many, many big $20 words strung together. And, and I consider myself, one of my undergraduate degrees is in English literature. And I, I've lived for a long time and I've, I've tried to speak well and I've read a lot of books. And, and there are still a lot of words that I just don't know. And when people put them all together and try to kind of give me a big jumble soup, um, I, I can't, I just kind of walk away from the debate because I, I can't argue in that way. Um, so she's obviously either bright or knows a lot of big words and looks like she studied philosophy perhaps more broadly than I have. I've been more narrow in my study, but I think she's absolutely wrong. Um, yeah, I, I don't consider... I can consider <laughs> coming, across, coming upon a piece of property and 
claiming ownership to it in a peaceful way, I don't consider that aggression. I what, don't. Well, okay, so if aggression isn't what creates property, what would you say creates property? Just to couch it in her terms to correct her. What would you say creates property? Well, I don't know. I'm not smart enough, but the one of the best answers I've heard has been kind of the the libertarian, the small L libertarian. And by the way, those of you who are not familiar with what I just said, small L, there's a continuum in libertarianism. If you believe in a little bit of liberty, like a little bit more than perhaps the Republican Party, you get a capital L. And, and so then you are part of the Libertarian Party. And then if you continue to believe in more and more and more liberty, like to an extreme, uh, <laughs> just a bunch of, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that's the definition right there. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Uh, so the Libertarian Party believes in a little bit more liberty than some, and there's some good people there that think it matters. But when I say the Libertarian position, I mean people who are, you know, read deeply and they don't just stop after three books and they like keep studying things and keep arguing and contemplating. The Libertarian position on property is the first person, kind of the homesteading principle, if you come upon a little hunk of nature that's not being used for anything and you put it to good use, it becomes yours. And an example would be a, a stick laying on the ground and go around and doesn't belong to anybody else. It's a stick way out in the middle of the woods and you don't see any notes attached to it that say, hey, this is my stick. You go, huh, I could make a, I could make a cool coconut knocker down or stick out of this and so you pick it up and you whittle it on a rock with a you know and you turn it into a coconut knocker down or stick and that is now your property that stick is and then i think we could take it further and say the coconut is there in the tree and you look around and say hey, does anybody own this coconut no too high can't reach it oh well i happen to have a coconut knocker down or stick and you knock down the coconut now you have a stick and a coconut and you haven't initiated violence against anybody. That's not aggressive. That's kind of how you would rightfully acquire property. And so that's the best explanation I've heard. I don't can know I, if it's right can I challenge me. you? Can I, can I devil's advocate yes, please. you? Because I, yes, I think she would say, uh, who says that's your stick? Says who? Yeah. And it does come down to what am I willing to do to defend my stick? Which because is, I would say, I, I'm saying it is. Aren't you agreeing with her now? So it's it's you're no. willing to use violence, therefore you have created property in the stick? The willingness to commit violence in defense is not the same as the initiation of violence. So uh, I, I think there's a big difference. If I say, hey, does this stick rightfully belong to anybody? Everybody agrees it doesn't. And I then pick the stick up. No, no initiation of force. If somebody walks up to me and says, hey, I'm going to take that stick, then if I'm a nice guy, what I would say is, oh, wait, was, were you not here when I asked if it belonged to you? And, and if they say, no, that is definitely my stick. I've been using it as a walking stick for three years, and I just laid it down to go pee behind a tree. Well, okay, that seems kind of reasonable. Then I would hand the stick over to them and say, oh, yeah, sorry. I, you might want to knock some coconuts down with it, too. I sharpened the end. Um, but I think we could all get along. Uh, I, I don't know. Does that answer her question or your question? Let me take a crack at at where I think she went wrong, because I'm, I, I think she would. The problem is, is that. Voluntarists and, and libertarians and anarcho-capitalist types will argue for property rights as if they're this objective thing, just like all the other rights. Rights are this objective inherent thing that just exists damn it it just exists can can you show me the receipts show me a picture of it picture it didn't happen um and so they were and so she takes the other side of that well the only way that your property rights exist is because you're willing to you're willing and or do use violence to protect them or to create them as she would say because if you don't use violence on people to defend your stick then it's almost like there is no property in your stick it's just you have a stick and you're not you're not hurting anybody that tries to take it from you so property kind of ceases to exist. So, and she thinks she's defeated you. Ha ha, libertarian dumbasses. <laughs> ha ha. <laughs> um, so the, uh, the thing that, sh it, it's like they hit the nail on the head 
without even realizing it. And this, again, this is why I've spent so much freaking time working on the, the, the answer to the questions, what are rights and who gets them? Because it, 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 is, it participates in every single rights-based discussion that you ever have. They're mutual reciprocal understandings between sentient beings, sentience defined as possessing the two capacities that I talk about uh, on the website, uh, disenthrall.me slash rights. It's a long discussion, so won't, won't do the whole thing again here. But the point is, it is a mutual reciprocal understanding. That's what rights are. That is what property is. That is what morality is. It is something that functions at the individual level and you agree to participate in it with other people. It's what elevates us out of the state of nature. The ooga booga, I'm on an island and this, my stick, bang, bang. You know, like if we're animals, <laughs> then might makes right. And uh, a lion's property is that which he can defend with his tooth and fang, right? Like that is the state of nature. That is the absence of of morality that is the absence of property systems what she's describing is the absence of a property system a property system is when two people agree to respect each other's property based on a system of property rights which involves uh what i would argue for first use homesteading which is a simplified version of the lockean uh property norms you know the most people would say Locke says uh, get there first uh, separate it from nature, mix your labor with it. For reasons that I've talked at length about in other videos I won't go into again here, you can just boil that down to make first use of a thing. And if you and I reciprocate the mutual respect of if I make first use of a stick, then that is my stick and you don't have the right to come take my stick, we just created property rights. We just elevated ourselves <laughs> out of the realm of nature of uh, we elevated ourselves out of the state of nature where might makes right. We created um, an ethical framework to function in. And if another human chooses to not reciprocate commies, then they are still in that state of nature and they are not deserving of your respect in any of their rights because they are choosing to um, uh, exempt themselves, sort of erase themselves from the realm of, of property rights by not reciprocating yours you have no onus to afford them it would be like pathological altruism to afford property rights to somebody who doesn't respect yours right that's that's my thoughts on that wow and now i'm gonna have to re-listen to what you just said over the last few minutes like six times because that's what i like to do on live shows is say i'm not sharp enough to argue but boy i'm gonna get you later i, I don't know i'm gonna have to really think about that i i that's deep good stuff cool Jeez. thanks for cool. making me think uh yeah I'm, so you're probably trying to stay awake i apologize we're let's 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 get going <laughs> we'll have to get the more going to my dentures <laughs> we'll, we'll be good oh geez all right all right um 